Watch With Your Popcorn. I am Rob. And I'm Dave. And today uh, we got a, a request to review the uh, film The Abominable Dr. Five starring horror icon Vincent Price. Nine killed you. Nine shall die and be returned your loss. Nine times nine. Nine killed you. Nine shall die. Nine. Eternities in doom. In this, this movie came out back in 1971, and the story is that Dr. Fibes um, is committing all these murders against these people as revenge for what they for murder what he claims to be murdering his wife, and he uses the curses of the Pharaoh uh, from the you know the books of Exodus as a as sort of like a little the guitar. The what, sir? The guitar. The ten curses visited upon the Pharaohs before Exodus. Oh, that is the uh, curse of boils, of bats, frogs, of frogs, yes, and the curse of blood. I see, sir. Yes. The curse of rats, hail, of beasts, the locusts, of course, the death of the firstborn, and then finally of darkness. Darkness, Rabbi. Yes. The final curse upon the land. Uh, and then a pl the police inspectors are trying to get at him, and one of the victims is played by Joseph Cotton. And this movie, Dave, is not exactly a horror movie, in my opinion. It's more of a suspense and perhaps a mystery thriller. I yeah. didn't because I didn't think this movie was all that scary, but it was. There, there. It's, it's like I said, it's more of a mystery. You've got all these clues. You have to figure out what's going to happen, how Dr. Fibes is going to do this, and then you have to uncover the motive. So as I was going along watching this movie, I was like, wow, it's not a scary movie, but it's definitely an interesting one and a definitely a mysterious one. Yeah, it also it kind of rips off some other horror films in a way. Like, uh, he's he likes to play like the organ and all that, and that kind of rips off like Phantom of the Opera. And, and the old horror movies, and there, yeah. And there's a few other things that are like real obvious. Well, I think the whole organ thing is, it's, it's by this point, just whenever you think of an evil sinister guy playing the organ, you're going to think of old horror movies anyway, so I saw that as more of a nod rather than a rip-off, but yeah, there, there are a few moments that are kind of, you know, you could figure out because you've seen it in other horror films, but... Yeah. The movie also mixes light and dark humor, and um, mm. which I also like, which I think you need. Like, the police inspectors are idiots in this movie, and they're all prim yeah. and proper, and they think they know everything, and they're all, you know, all top-notch and all this other stuff. Right. And, and all this stuff. So I thought they provided very good comedy relief inside the movie. Yes, all right. Thank you very much. Take them all off to the laboratory, would you? Right, sir. And have them double-checked for rabies. Yes. Now, Morgan. Yes, sir. Where the hell are you? I'm up here, sir. Oh, so you are. When you finished up there, I want you to question the butler again. There may be something he's overlooking. Oh, don't take him out like that. At least cover his face up. Well, I, I never really laughed at anything in this film. I was just kind of going along with it because this, this wasn't, like, the best thing I've seen. I don't know. It, it, it was real campy and just... Yeah. It's a 1970s yeah. Vincent Price movie. It's campy. It gets boring sometimes, too. I didn't think the movie was boring at all. I was, I mean, granted, it takes a while for the movie to get started because I, like, especially in the first 15 minutes. But after that, it took off, and I was really involved in the story. I was really involved yeah. in the characters, and later I was really involved on, in the mystery. Later on in the movie, it gets a little bit better once, once they start figuring things out. But a lot of the acting is just slow and it's bad. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think. Well, slow, I, I can understand, but bad. I don't think there was really anybody bad in this movie yeah. personally. I mean, it's also a colorful-looking movie, too, which is odd for a horror movie. Usually, the mo I think the most um, effective... Well, like I said, it's not really a horror movie, but I mean, normally with horror movies, you know, it's usually darker photography, but everything is very natural photography for the location yeah. stuff, and the sets themselves are very colorful. So. That's Your wife, no fives. But you I will kill. But you can't, Doctor. I am already dead. Because even the coloring kind of looked like the old Batman TV show from years ago. Well, I mean, that's probably the how a lot of things were done back then. This was late 60s, early 70s, where films were a little bit color, more colorful, a little bit perhaps a little bit more campier. But I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, granted, it's not a horror movie like I thought it would be. I mean, I've seen this once before. I also there's also a sequel that I didn't that I haven't had a chance to see for a while called Doctor Fibes Rises Again. Yeah, it came with 
when I rented on Netflix that came with it, it was like a two-sided yeah. disc. I think for what it is, I think it's a very interesting mystery. If you like mysteries, and this one's not a complicated one, you'll enjoy it. And of course, if you're a diehard Vincent Price fan, I don't see why you can't watch this either. I think it's, yeah. a, I think it's a fun mystery suspenseful thriller. Yeah, it, it's take it or leave it with me. It's, it's not the best thing I've seen. Right, well, that's our review of The Abominable Do Dr. Fives. It sounds like I enjoyed the movie a little bit more than Dave did, but uh, we'll leave the floor to you. Uh, what did you think of Dr. Fives, if you have seen it? Go ahead and post your comments, and um, we do read them, and uh, we'll see you next time, okay?